All right. Good evening. It is 7 p.m. It is Friday night, and that can mean only one thing. It is time for this Friday's live stream. Hope you guys have all had a good week. Uh, mine went by pretty fast, so no complaints there. Matt, what is up? Wolf, what is up? Uh, gentlemen, how was your week? Did you guys have a good week? I'm going to go ahead and start up the footage here. And uh, Matt, you'll be happy to know that we are starting with the USS Kid. Of course, she is one of my favorite ships of all. Rocking the Kid t-shirt this week. And <clears throat> joining us, all warships except for one, uh, USS Arizona, USS North Carolina, USS New Orleans, and USS Missouri, and right in front of Missouri is the Britannic. And of course, the yet to be built US, US, <coughs> RMS Olympic. So, uh, here we go. We're looking at the kid in action this week. Uh, Wolf, I'm doing great, just got my model kits. Uh, what, uh, remind me, Wolf, what kits uh, exactly did you get? I, um, I forget. That says, took a nap, an afternoon nap, and now I'm watching your stream. Well, I am glad you are watching the stream. Uh, gives me an extra person to talk to, so uh, this doesn't get so bland. <laughs> and, uh... Speaking of, uh, Matt, did you get uh, Kansas for American Truck Sim yet? Uh, I got it last night, but I actually uh, did not go into Kansas in the game until early this morning. I got on for a few minutes, uh, did a real short uh, delivery from uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma to, uh, I think, Wichita. So that's my first foray into Kansas. And I will be probably playing American Truck Sim after the stream tonight. <clears throat> Let's see. Wolf, you got HMS Hood, Kelly, Prince of Wales, Penelope. All are British and in 1700. Excellent. Um, I know we were talking about the, uh, the Montana class a lot today on Discord. Do you have... Uh, any intentions of getting any of those models? Uh, I can tell you, my uh, my beloved USS Louisiana that was never built uh, in real life, um, because none of the Montanas were built in real life, it, it is a certainty at some point next year I am uh, going to try and get the, uh, the Louisiana. Uh, Matt, shooting a job for the paper tomorrow, and then I'll be getting it once I get paid. Okay. So, um, I know we, uh, we had, you had asked me to go somewhere with you, uh, tomorrow. Is that not happening now? Nathan, what is up, my man? How are you doing? Uh, how has this week been for you? Little Bird told me you were looking at a forerunner. Yes, I was. Wolf says, I would love a Montana class battleship, but I don't know when I'll get one. Well, as you know, for me, it's going to be high on the priority list because of the fact that one of them would have been USS Louisiana. So, um, but as far as my modeling uh, goes, uh, I am working on the, the USS Sullivan's model that I'm converting to the USS Kid. Uh, once that is done... I will be focusing mostly on uh, completing the 1 to 700, uh, oh, here we go, USS Texas, another one I've been to recently. Um, so, uh, yeah, so once I'm done with the kid, um, I am going to be working on the Olympic class, all three liners in 1 to 700 scale. 
Uh, as you saw earlier, I've got the Olympic. I'm going to buy two Titanic models. I am going to build one, of course, as the Titanic. And one, I am going to do a conversion to the Britannic. I've already started ordering uh, 3D printed pieces to make that conversion possible. So that is what I, um, that is in my immediate plan. So once I'm done with the kid, I'm going to go full steam ahead with the, uh, the Olympic class. <clears> oh, <throat> uh, what, what year, uh, model for runner, uh, Nathan, I believe it was a, uh, I think it was a 17 or an 18, I forget. Um, and I think it's just like a regular four runner. Uh, Matt, oh yeah, we are doing a trip in the morning, then the Christmas parade is tomorrow night at 5. Okay, so you're doing photos for a Christmas parade. That's cool. It's funny. Um, <clears throat> Wolf and I were talking. Uh, Wolf posted uh, pictures of the USS Mississippi in um, a Discord earlier today, and I was like, what a coincidence. Uh, supposed to be going to uh, Mississippi tomorrow, taking a little road trip across the state line. Uh, you told me 17. Okay, uh, 17 it is then. I, I really don't remember. <laughs> uh, I think it was a two-wheel drive, Nathan. <clears throat> Looking at the... the I don't know if Texas ever had a nickname. I, I'd like to call it the Big T, or maybe, or is that too cheesy? Oh, and speaking of the ships, um, we we have a new uh, video on the channel. That's uh, this week's video came out this morning, of course, as they do every Friday morning at seven a.m., and it is the tour of. Basically, the Galveston Naval Museum, uh, where you can uh, tour the USS Stewart and the USS Cavalla. And uh, that video is now available on the channel. Wolf says, I like calling her Old Tex. What about Old, like O-L-E Tex? I mean, Old Tex sounds cool, too, but, you know, just a, another little play on it. I could dig that. I have to look up and see if she ever actually had a nickname. You know, um, Alabama had the Mighty A, uh, Missouri had Mighty Mo, uh, North Carolina's nickname was the Showboat. <clears throat> And actually, I haven't played Warships in a bit because uh, I've actually been pretty busy uh, just with kind of real-life things going on. So um, I've not played this game in quite a bit. Uh, well, I say quite a bit, but maybe a week. Well, if that does sound a little better. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, Old Tex. Old Tex sounds good. I dig it. Uh, Matt says, according to Google, Texas did have a nickname. Texas developed a reputation as a jinxed or unlucky ship after several accidents early in her career. She consequently earned the nickname Old Hoodoo. Well, that's not a very flattering nickname. But, uh, you know, Olympic had a lot of, uh, uh, you know, little incidents in her career, too. But she still ended up with the nickname Old Reliable. So uh, yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna go with the old with old tax. I kind of I kind of dig that. That seems more flattering than uh, old hoodoo. <laughs> Nathan, I'd like to get back in a Rav Four. Rav Fours are great little cars. Um, I actually thought about looking at one of those uh, in the recent past. However, um, it's just a bit too uh, small for me. Wolf says I think that's the other Texas's name. Okay. So, uh, in order to verify that, um, when you're the whatever you're looking at, Matt, if it's um, 
USS Texas BB-35, then that is the USS Texas that you see here in the game. That's the one that I visited uh, a few weeks ago. If it is not BB-35, then uh, that is a different ship. Nathan says, I used to have a 2005 RAV4 in high school. Nice. They got a great model of the uh, the the, Louis the USS Louisiana that actually existed uh, at the USS Kidd Museum, and they actually have the uh, the builder's model for the USS New Orleans there as well. And I, and if you read the the nameplate at the museum, it actually says something to the effect of uh, on loan or something uh, from the United States Navy. <clears throat> Well, the Texas you're talking about probably is the pre-dreadnought USS Texas, a much smaller ship. It pro that probably wasn't even a battleship, I would think. I, I could be wrong on that. Nathan, you just want a smaller vehicle than the Tundra, hence the Forerunner, or just wanted something different? Uh, it was a matter of um, just wanting something a little more updated uh, as well as uh, something with slightly better gas mileage. I mean, Forerunner isn't going to be leaps and bounds better than a Tundra, but it is a little better. But well, I am going to assume that you've already watched uh, this week's video. Am I correct? <laughs> Gee, Texas is hanging on for dear life right here in this fight. And better miles per gallon is nice, without a doubt. Trying to think of uh, where I want to go next year uh, for some trips because I know uh, I'm going on a cruise next year. So um, I try to take like two trips uh, every year. And um, <laughs> Wolf, yep, I have. I, I kind of thought so. I, I knew that one. Uh, you weren't going to wait around to watch that one. But yeah, I, I try to take two trips a year. One of them next year is going to be a cruise and I don't know what the other one's going to be yet. If um, if the Texas is ready and reopened as a museum ship before the cruise, I might make that my trip, but I don't think it's going to be ready in time. Nathan says, I appreciate having my Accord. Well, you should. Uh, I, I've always, I've said it for a while now, and I've always, and I'll keep saying it, I think Toyota's the best, and I think Honda's right behind it, so... You know, you cannot go wrong with a Honda. Wolf, did you notice in the video when I was pointing out the top, uh, there's a part in the video where I'm standing on the starboard side of the steward and I'm looking across uh, down the Galveston channel. I don't know if that's the, the right name for it, but down that channel, you have these two giant towers sticking up above the tree line. And there's this tiny, tiny little thing sticking up right next to the left one. And that is the very top of the, uh, the, of the Texas here. So you can technically say the Texas has been in one of my videos now. Nathan might go down to Vero Beach this Christmas to go see my uncle and aunt. Probably going to take the Accords. It's going to be 30 miles per hour on the highway during long trips. Where exactly is Vero Beach, Nathan? Uh, I assume it's in Florida, uh, but I have not heard of Vero Beach. And by the way, that is not the last uh, Texas-related content uh, video. Uh, there's going to be a few more. I, I got a bunch of footage while I was uh, while I was out there, and not just in Galveston. 
Nathan, it's like three hours down south in Florida. Okay. Um, I know for sure I will be in Key West at some point next year. Let's see, Wolf, that's really cool that you can see the text from the other two museums, right? Honestly, uh, there was a there was an, a spot where I want to I missed so many opportunities to get some great drone footage out there because of the weather conditions. As you've seen uh, two different videos now and both of them, the, the weather was just too bad. Uh, it was raining. It was too windy. I couldn't fly the drone at all. Um, I would have been able to get the Texas in the drone uh, footage without actually being in uh, on the property where we did the tour and I would not be violating my uh, photo release that I signed um, had I was was I able to do so but uh, it just wasn't meant to be uh, one hack modeler can't wait to visit Texas when she's done with her rehab modeler welcome to the channel and um, I'll tell you this, uh, I, I know the dry dock tour is pretty expensive, I mean, I know because I did it, um, but if you get a chance, you should check that out too. It's actually way cool. Uh, you can't board the ship, but still, I mean, being able to go around the ship, you know, on the hull, touching the ship, we go underneath the ship to the very keel, the original part of the very bottom of the ship. And we we're able to touch that. There was a part of the hull that was open that you could stick your head in and look around inside the hull. And of course, they're they're telling you about the ship. They're telling you about its history um, while you're doing that. But uh, yeah, no, one hundred percent agreed. As soon as the ship is reopened at the uh, in Galveston, because that's where it's going to stay. It's going to be uh, at a place where they call it Pier Twenty One. That's where she's going to reopen as a museum ship. When that happens, I am definitely going back so I can actually go on the ship. Nathan, I got them last year but never got around to restoring them. Oh, that's a bummer. Uh, Wolf, that's Texas's weather for you. Ruins all your plans. Yeah, well, and, and when I got back, the weather moved east towards Louisiana. So, you know... I got the weather the whole time I was in Texas, and I got it, you know, on the way back. I got it the whole time I was, you know, through the rest of that week in Louisiana as well. Been following the dry dock process. Uh, I have too, and I, I love that they put out videos every so often on it. And uh, the photos I've got um, of my dry dock tour, I've got my photos on the Discord server. Uh, so if you're interested in joining our Discord and checking that out, you're certainly welcome to. Um, but, uh, the ones I've got was right before they started painting the ship, which they've now begun. So my photos are really, I feel like they're kind of special in that sense. I did the dry dock tour before they started repainting the ship. <clears throat> Matt, I'm guessing those photos of the kid were old. I don't think they would be able to float the ship now. Um, what, what photos are you referring to, Matt? Because uh, the, the ship will be floated um, when they go to take it in dry dock next year. They just they have to wait for the river to rise back up to a point where the ship can float and they can remove it from the platform that holds it to get it down river to New Orleans. Uh, Nathan, the Serwin Vegas I got were in good condition or restored are like five six hundred dollars speakers. I snagged them up for 150 which is a great deal, and looking forward to that project. Well, you and Matt got a whole lot in common because Matt loves, like, old stereo equipment and stuff, too. And uh, I think that's what he's going to uh, take a little road trip for tomorrow is to pick up some speakers or something. <clears throat> Uh, Matt says, I shared the photos of the kid on Discord. The kid was floating and guided with a tugboat. Oh, I have not seen those pictures yet, Matt. Um, as soon as the stream is over, I will take a look at those. Um, 
If she was being towed in the Mississippi, it might, it was probably when the ship was being towed to Baton Rouge because the ship got to Baton Rouge uh, in either 81 or 82 and it has not moved from Baton Rouge in the spot where it's at uh, since 81, 82 when it got there. So that's probably the, uh, the photos that you saw. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, you're talking about that newer kid. I thought you were talking about DD-661 that's in Baton Rouge. The one you posted is not USS Kid DD-661 that's in Baton Rouge. That is a newer USS Kid. And yeah, I did see those photos that you're talking about on Facebook. There are three different ships named USS Kid, and the one in Baton Rouge is the original ship that goes by that name. Yeah, sometimes you gotta watch that with uh, with US Navy ships because it's not uncommon for them to use a name more than once. Matt, oh, I didn't even notice. Yeah, no, I, I definitely noticed. Yeah, I thought you uh, I thought you might admit you posted some more since you posted those. But yeah, that's a com that is a completely different ship that just happens to have the same name. I don't know that that is one thing that is definitely going to happen when when they do bring the kid the dry dock I will be there I I I would ideally I would like to live stream it I don't know yet if I'm going to be able to um, even if I can't live stream it I am definitely recording footage for the channel because that's going to be a historic event you know the kid hasn't left Baton Rouge in 40 years so I definitely want to see the kid moving down the river. How cool is that going to be? Let's see, Wolf says the current kid is Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer. I wonder if that's the one that Matt posted pictures of in the Discord. I, I don't remember um, I don't remember if that's the second kid or if that's the third kid I would think that it would be the third kid oh Texas got a citadel on that ship Yeah, Texas is doing pretty good in this round. That would be a hell of a meetup, Wolf. If uh, once the once the Texas is reopened as a uh, a museum ship, we could meet up and tour it. Uh, let's see. Well, it says the second kid was a cruiser or something uh, class to that and isn't around anymore. Okay, that's what I was that's what I was kind of thinking. It had to be the third one because uh, I was trying to remember. I, I remember reading about the other two uh, in DD sixty one's museum because. Uh, and this is one thing where I, th I think the Kid Museum did better than the Galveston Museum. The Galveston Museum is essentially just the ships and nothing else. Um, the Kid has, you know, the Kid, of course, but it also has a building um, 
with tons of different artifacts uh, from all branches of the military as well. The, the whole area is like a, um, uh, a war memorial uh, museum, and it's also got uh, a section that's dedicated to, uh, you know, Louisiana veterans. And um, in there somewhere, I forget exactly where, and I forget exactly what it said, but they talked about how there are, there are three ships that were named after uh, Isaac Kidd. Now that would be awesome, <laughs> right? He's talking about it in reference to meeting up and touring the Texas together, because I, I can tell you for sure it's, it's happening for me. That there's no two ways around it. I'm, I'm walking on this ship. I mean, come on, she's the, she's the only dreadnought left in the world that you will actually be able to tour. And now that's in the conversation we were having earlier as well. Every ship that is a sunken wreck, technically that ship still exists. You know, to me, uh, in my mind, the only ships that uh, don't exist anymore are ships that were scrapped. So, um, you know, Arizona still exists. Uh, Titanic still exists. Britannic still exists. But, you know, there are other dreadnoughts that still exist, but they're all sunken wrecks. So the opportunity to go on the only one that still exists, and it's really less than a day's drive for me, of course I'm going to go see that. <laughs> Will says, I'm definitely going to see her too. Yep, and hey, at the same time, make plans to go and tour the Kavala and the Steward. Because I'm telling you, when, you, when you're going down the road uh, to get to... Um, I think it's called, I think it's Gulf Copper Shipyards. I think that's the name of the shipyard that Texas is in. You stay straight and you, you turn right to go down the road to get to that shipyard. But if you stay straight, going go down the road another two minutes, you're at the Galveston Ma Naval Museum. It's that close. So you're going to see Texas, Cavalla, and Stewart all on the same day. Uh, let's see, Wolf U USS Utah still exists. Yep, USS Massachusetts still exists. Yep, Massachusetts is the one that um, I believe you can go snorkeling uh, off the coast of Pensacola and see the wreck because it's like in I think 25 30 feet of, uh, deep of water. There's an uh, there's an aircraft carrier that was sunk off the coast of Florida as well. I want to say it's like in a hundred something feet of water. Um, so you got to go scuba diving in order to see that one. But I believe you can snorkel to the Massachusetts. I could be wrong on that, but I think you can. Now, of course, there is also um, the Massachusetts that is a South Dakota class sister ship to the Alabama that you can go see in Boston. Uh, that ship, of course, is still afloat. I forget the, that Massachusetts uh, hull number. I know Alabama is a BB-60. It's pretty cool to think both USS Massachusetts still exists. Yep, and you can actually tour the, uh, the newer one. But um, like I said, she's a sister ship to the Alabama, so um, I don't know how different they are. But if they're close enough, if you've been to the Alabama, you could say you've been to the Massachusetts. The carrier is an Essex class. Gotcha. You know what? I really wish, and I would have thought about this, I uh, started doing YouTube when I toured both the Midway and the North Carolina because um, – You'll never see tour videos of those unless I go back to them uh, on the channel because um, when I toured those ships, that was before I decided to start doing YouTube. So um, maybe someday I'll go and revisit those two. But, I mean, there are others that I want to see that I have not seen yet uh, that are going to take precedence. You know, i got to see one of the Iowas. 
you know, my dream is the mighty Mo, but you know, if I can see, ooh, got a Citadel there. If I can see uh, one of the other ones, I'm fine with that too. Well, I love how they didn't just sink the Essex carrier, though I'm kind of upset they didn't preserve her as a museum. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of them that I would have liked to have seen preserved. Um, I mean, it's, it's a bummer, but what can you do? As like with the, uh, the Montana class, how amazing would those ships have been? Those ships would have been able to rival the Yamatos. And like I was saying on our Discord earlier, uh, there would have been five of those. Yamato wouldn't have stood a chance. And Yamato is, as they say, the, the biggest and the baddest battleship ever built. Yeah, Wisconsin is the closest being in Virginia. Yeah, Wisconsin, uh, New Jersey's, of course, in New Jersey. Iowa's in, uh, in L.A. And Mo, of course, uh, Pearl Harbor. But Iowa could be a possibility, too, because, as you know, Queen Mary is near the top of my list as well. Queen Mary's in Long Beach. Long Beach is less than an hour from L.A., Go see Queen Mary one day. Go spend a day on the Queen Mary. The next day, go visit the Iowa or vice versa. You know, two birds, one stone, one trip. I, was, I remember seeing this thing, too. Uh... Did you ever watch the um, the warships video that they put on YouTube about the Iowas? It's interesting because they say how um, they compare the Iowas uh, to the Bismarck, and they say that the Iowas would have wrecked the Bismarck, despite the Bismarck being uh, having a reputation for being a really strong ship. But they say uh, the Iowa wouldn't have stood a chance against the Yamato. Had those Montanas been built, the Yamato would have gotten a run for her money. Uh, Matt, our destination tomorrow is not far from Washington Street Pier. If by some miracle it's not raining hard, I'd like to go walk the pier and see the Bay St. Louis Bridge. That's cool. Um, I've crossed that bridge several times. Uh, it's an it's not the uh, original bridge uh, over Bay St. Louis. It is a replacement bridge because uh, Katrina destroyed the one that was there. Uh, Wolf, two ships, one shell, and yes, you've seen the video. Nice. Yep, so we're still checking out the Texas here. We do have uh, other ships as well that we're going to be looking at before the end of the stream here. Let's see how much time we got left. Oh, yeah, we got plenty of time. We're going to be seeing uh, two more ships in a bit. Yeah, that was one of the things I was doing in Galveston. I was watching a lot of the uh, videos on some of my favorite ships that, uh, that Warships has done. That's a question for you, for you guys, and really, and, and really, anybody can answer this. I think I know Matt's answer because of what he plays in warships. But what is your favorite type of warship? Is it the battleship? Is it the cruiser? Is it the destroyer? Is it the carrier? Is it the submarine? Anyone can answer that question. I said I think I know Matt's answer because of what he plays in warships. Um, my personal favorite, of course, has always been the battleships. Battleships and ocean liners. I mean, is it's is there? Can you get more yin and yang than that? But I don't. I don't know. I love the the sleek, the beauty, the elegance of uh, of the ocean liners. But I love the big, tough, monster battleships. You know that can just go in and wreck stuff.
Wolf, you are, you are, we are one and the same with that. We are all about the battleships. What about you, Matt? Am I right in thinking that the destroyers are your favorite? I have a feeling I'm correct on that. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, yeah, the destroyers are my favorite to play, but in real life, I think I have to pick the battleships and the carriers. They are just so massive, an incredible show of power and force. I could not agree more. More so with the uh, the battleships, of course, because I'm just partial to battleships. But um, Matt, do you have um, do you have Peacock by any chance? Well, it says next to battleships, I'd say heavy cruisers or light cruisers. Um, for me. I my next in line, uh, I'd probably have to go with the destroyers just because I love the kids so much. Now, even though I prefer battleships as a whole, I think I like the kid. The kid might be my my favorite warship. Period. I know that's kind of weird, but I'm weird. <clears throat> Okay, uh, Matt says, I do not. Uh, the reason I ask is because, um, and I think I mentioned this movie a few weeks ago, um, and I suggested it to Wolf. Um, there's a, a movie, uh, it's an old movie, it came out either in the late 70s or the early 80s, it's called The Final Countdown, and um, it is about the USS Nimitz, which is a carrier that gets uh, caught in like some freak storm off the coast of Pearl Harbor and is transported uh, transported transported back in time and the day that it's transported to is December 6th 1941 and upon realizing that they have a dilemma to face does a uh, uh, does this carrier interfere with what's going to happen on December 7th or not. It's a it's a great uh, like what if scenario type movie. Oh, a collision there. Let's say we can see that cruiser gets torqued, but it didn't get a chance. says my favorite warship is USS Texas though it's not because I'm being patriotic or anything it's because it's the only dreadnought left that I could be living in say California and Texas would still be my favorite well uh, she's she's high on the top of my list because uh, for that reason as well you know it's it's weird uh, which conundrum with ships that still exist and ships that don't exist anymore you know like the kid, I think one of the reasons why I love the kid so much is because I can I can go to it tomorrow if I want it tomorrow morning. I go straight to the kid. Uh, it's a hop, skip, and a jump away from uh, for me. And I've already been on it several times. I can go to it. I can see it. I can touch it. I can learn and retain more knowledge about it every single time I go to it. Um, whereas you know, a ship that doesn't exist anymore, um, like the, uh, the the USS Louisiana that did exist. 
I can't see that ship. I can't touch that ship. So I don't know. It's weird because, and I've always say this, um, every time you ask me, what's my favorite ship? My default answer is always Titanic because Titanic is the ship that got me into all ships. But there are also times where she's not my favorite ship. I There are times where I prefer Olympic over Titanic because of her history. She was a successful ship. She had a 24-year career at sea. So, I don't know. I kind of flip-flop a lot on that. But yeah, I definitely get the point of it's easier to have a, a ship be your favorite that is still in existence and you can go to it, you can see it, you can touch it, you know. I definitely get that. Because I can tell you right now, uh, there are some wrecks I wouldn't mind going to. I probably would go to the, if I could go in a sub, I would probably go to the wreck of Britannic. Would I go to Titanic? No way in hell. And I felt that way long before the whole Ocean Gate thing. That had not, that has nothing to do with it. Will says, if it was still around, my favorite would be USS California. Yes, yeah, she was a very unique ship. Not, not originally, but after uh, she got her refit. You know, the hull of a dreadnought, but uh, a more modern look to the superstructure. And that was a very unique looking ship after her refit. If you don't have a model of that one, Wolf, I hope you find one someday. Can't say I've ever actually searched for a model of that one. Well, I would never go on a sub down to Titanic even before Ocean Gate. Yeah, I, I, I felt that way long before Ocean Gate. I mean, as amazing as it would be to see the Titanic, um, even seeing the ship with your own eyes, you still can't touch it. And I mean, you can't do that with the Britannic either, but I'm just not going down two and a half miles below the surface. I'm just not doing it. I need to check and see, um, has there been any... Uh, new news on uh the ocean gate situation uh i never i haven't heard anything on what's been going on with the investigation um i definitely need to look into that and if, um if there's anything uh noteworthy we can discuss it like next week or something or in discord Uh, well, if I plan on getting one next year, if I don't get it for Christmas, referring to the California model. Okay, that's good. So I'm glad to see there's one that exists because I was, I did not know there was one that uh, exists. I, I never actually looked to see. I'm assuming you have uh, the California in warships as well, Wolf. Matt says, I heard the owner is building another sub. That's got to be some, uh, I hate to use the term fake news, Matt. Um, I have a very hard time believing that's going to happen. Because remember, that, that, that whole situation is still under investigation. Now, last I heard, Ocean Gates has suspended all operations. I, I, I find it very hard to believe that they are building another sub. Uh, 
Uh, Wolf, a trumpeter, has produced uh, California in 1 to 700. Oh, sweet. Maybe somewhere further down the line when I get the, the bulk of the ones I want out the way, I might look into that. Matt says, oh, it could be, never know what to believe on the internet. True, but it, honestly, if I read that, I would laugh it off because I just, there's, I have a very, very hard time believing that you're going to see uh, anyone doing, I hate to say the word, a stunt like that again. He says they should be financially crippled in legal stuff. It's hard to imagine they could do it precisely, because um, even before I, I don't. And here's the thing about you know they had the the um, you know the uh, the people who went on the sub they had to sign waivers and all that. Take that stuff with a grain of salt. I, I don't care what anybody says. Somebody's getting sued. And I can tell you now, it, Ocean Gate, if they're not being sued already, it's going to happen. Because uh, everything on the surface, just what we know, already know about the situation uh, from the media reports, the company was extremely uh, negligent. And from the, from the building of the sub, the operation of the sub, I mean, you know... A damn video game controller. Yeah, I know it was a PlayStation one, whatever. You get the point. It's a damn video game controller. You're taking two people, I mean, five people down two and a half miles below the surface to see the Titanic on a sub that's not rated to go that far. No. I mean, at the most, you know, and I'm not, a, I'm not an attorney. I don't know how those things work. Negligent homicide, though, I mean... Yeah, no. Now, I'm, I, they, I imagine somebody's going to get the pants suit off of them. And that whole situation just, uh, that makes me so angry that grinds my gears Matt the sales of that controller have skyrocketed well I can assure you no one's putting them in a sub uh, there they skyrocketed so people can play video games Nathan, only submarine I trust would be one from the U.S. Navy. Um, does the Navy even have subs that go down as far as Titanic? Because I can tell you uh, the nuclear subs and all that. Now, I remember watching something on it where the subs, uh, you know, the current modern-day submarines, they're not even rated to go down that deep. You know, it's specialized subs that are built to go into depths that deep. They have ships... Uh, um, not ships, but submersibles that can go deeper than what the Titanic is. Uh, I think Cameron's been to like the Mariana Trench or something like that. Um, but I don't even know if the Navy makes uh, subs that go down that deep. Um, I could be wrong. Maybe they do, but I'm not sure. I just know that the ones that are you, the ones that have been used to go down to Titanic. Um, to my knowledge, are not uh, controlled by the Navy. Uh, Matt, that, that was what I was about to say. The nuke subs aren't certified that deep. No, they are not. Uh, Wolf, only sub I would go on would be a museum. I would, I think I would feel okay going on a modern uh, Navy nuclear submarine, provided it only goes, uh, no, it doesn't go any deeper than the depth that it's rated for. But yeah, you know, the submarines I've been on, it's funny, they're sister ships and they look absolutely nothing alike. 
Bull says, okay, that's a lie. I would probably go on a sub, say, with the U.S. or British Navy because I feel like they are probably the best. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Oh, look at that Citadel and Sunk by old Tex. I'm digging that, Wolf. That's what we're going to stick with, old Tex. Yeah, it's funny. You could, you could, ah, oh, look at that. There we go. The ship, beautiful. RMS Aquitania. I say, here, here's my yin and yang right here. I'm watching the Texas wreck shop, and here we go. The majesty, the beauty of uh, one of these grand old ladies right here. Here she is protected in this harbor, and you see, you've got these warships shooting at each other. That was just random luck that I did. I always exit out of a game uh, in warships as soon as I die. I don't know what possessed me to just kind of look around the map and check out some of the other action. That's how I stumbled upon uh, Aquitania here. Well, such a beautiful ship. Yes, she certainly is. It's funny. Uh, the Olympians were White Star's answer to Lusitania and Mauritania. Aquitania is Kennard's answer to the Olympians. Is you know they're always everyone's always trying to one up each other. Tupolev 144 says, hi, how are you, my friend? Welcome, welcome to the channel. Uh, how, how are you doing this evening? Hope your week has been great. We do this every Friday. We, we do a one-hour live stream where we just talk about, uh, you know, just random, uh, random historical things, mostly maritime stuff, you know, ships and whatnot, um, and we just chill and hang out and have a little fun. I'm okay. Good. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Glad you could join us. Now, of course, we do have one more ship we're going to check out here. The Aquitania footage is not very long because it's just kind of sitting here. We can't go uh, and look at the interiors. We can't walk the decks uh, like you can in uh, Honor and Glory or a uh, Britannic patroness of the Mediterranean, so the Aquitania footage isn't real long. Bro, my country is 854. Okay. Uh, 754 my time. And here we go, final ship we're going to be looking at for the evening. Here she is. Right there. USS Arizona. We haven't looked at the Arizona in a while, so I figured it was time. Arizona was a Pennsylvania-class ship. Those big towers are not original to her. That was done after a refit. Originally, she had like the cage masts, and there are pictures of her like that. In fact, I think the thumbnail for this week's live stream is... Uh, a picture of the Arizona with the uh, with the cage masts on it. Wolf, Arizona, the one and only. Wait, there's a sub now, so the other Arizona. Well, there, there's a, a USS Louisiana that's a sub, too. Uh, it's funny how after they stopped making battleships, because uh, all the battleships were named after states, now all the modern subs are named after states. 
Matt, if I ever go somehow go to Hawaii, I'd like to go see the memorial. If I were to go to Hawaii, you know, everybody wants to go to Hawaii because, you know, the, the, the beaches and, uh, and all that stuff. And, yeah, that's beautiful. If I were to go to Hawaii, this is why I'm going to Hawaii. I'm going to see the Arizona. I want to see the remains of the Utah. Uh, maybe 500 yards or so at the most away from the Arizona, overlooking the Arizona, the Mighty Mo. My favorite Iowa class ship and one of my favorite ships, period. So, of course, I, that's why I'm going to Hawaii. I wonder if there are any any uh, Arizona survivors left that are still alive. That's something I might have to look into. And the reason I thought of that was because I know um, anytime any of the survivors uh, of the Arizona pass away, they are given the option to be entombed in the Arizona with their shipmates. I want, and I'm sure some of them have. I don't know if they all have. That That's going to be an interesting topic. Uh, Wolf, you know there's a there's also a World War II sub at Pearl, too, but I can't remember if it's a Gatto or another class. Hmm. One of these days I'm going to learn how to pronounce that correctly. I'm convinced it's either Gatto or Gato. Uh, well, says only one survivor left. I might be wrong now. Yeah, that's going to be something uh, worth looking into. Oh, uh, here's a here's a good story for you guys. Uh, are any of you familiar with the Arizona's connection to Elvis Presley? I'll wait for I'll wait before I uh, I say anything about that. See, give you guys some time to respond to that. Matt says, Lou Conter was 20 years old when the warship he was on, uh, he was on the Arizona, according to Google. Okay. So I'm assuming he is still alive then. So what about it? Is anyone familiar with Elvis Presley's connection to the USS Arizona? I'll wait just a bit longer and see. Wolf says I don't think so. Okay. Okay, so, and I forget all of the details, but Elvis played a big part in the uh, getting the funds needed to build the Arizona Memorial. Um, I forget in exactly, uh, uh, Matt says, yeah, he's the only known survivor as of 2013. You're referring to Lou Conter. And it says, no, let's hear the Elvis connection. Okay, so, um, and I forget what year. I want to, I think it was uh, in the 50s. They started uh, trying to raise the funds to build the Arizona Memorial, and they... For whatever reason, uh, they kept struggling to get the amount of funds they needed uh, to do the memorial. Well, uh, I think Elvis was positioned uh, or stationed in Hawaii or he was doing a tour or making a movie uh, in Hawaii because he did make a movie in Hawaii. Uh, I think it was called Blue Hawaii. I forget his exactly re his exact reason for being there, but... Um, he was told about the story uh, of the Arizona Memorial, how they were trying to make it happen, and they were having trouble getting the funds. So Elvis held a benefit concert to raise the funds needed to build the memorial. 
Um, as a result of that concert, uh, they got all the funds they needed and the memorial was built. Uh, Nathan, warships tonight or not? Uh, yeah, we could probably play a few rounds. I, I, I'd be down for that. But yeah, if you want to look online, you can actually go find the uh, all the details on it. But yeah, that uh, that's a true story, you know. So kudos to Elvis on that one. And I don't remember if that was before, during, or after Elvis uh, was in the army. Well, that's awesome. Yes, absolutely. So, yep, we, we can we can thank Elvis for helping out. Uh, he's a big reason why we have the Arizona Memorial. Matt, yeah, I'll play a round or two. Yeah, I, I don't think I'll be on for too, too long, but, yeah, I can play a few rounds. In fact, uh, it's 8.02 my time right now, so... Um, we're going to get ready to wrap this up in a few minutes. But I definitely wanted to take a, uh, another look at the Arizona. Like I said, we haven't looked at this ship uh, in a while. It's funny. Uh, the only reason I even have Arizona footage, um, warships on two separate occasions uh, gave me the Arizona to play for like a week. That's how I got the footage uh, that I have be nice if they did it again at some point or, or you know if they would put the ship on sale I would buy it you know their their DLC prices are outrageous on warships now, I think the Arizona is almost 30 bucks the Alabama's 50 bucks the kids 35 bucks I am NOT paying that much for DLC no way in hell like the only reason I got uh, the Texas is because it's been on sale for ten bucks for like the past two months. No, I got no problem with like ten bucks, um, maybe even like twelve, thirteen dollars, but I'm not paying upwards of twenty bucks, you know, for a ship. It's not happening. No matter how, I don't care how bad I like the ship. Arizona's got some serious AA on her, too. Well, it says 50 bucks for some of those ships, right? And I, I'm just not doing it. Yeah, the Alabama's 50 bucks, and I would love, absolutely love to have the Alabama in the game, but I'm not doing it. Uh, well, if you know how many models I could buy with 50 bucks, <laughs> right? Shoot, that North Carolina I paid like 25 bucks for. I think I paid 20 bucks for the New Orleans. All those were like dirt cheap. I think I paid 15 bucks for that Arizona. Yeah, she was a good looking ship there. And fun fact, um, in case uh, you guys, uh, Wolf probably, you might have known this, but in case uh, you other guys may not have known this, you notice the tops of the turrets are painted red. Um, every ship, every battleship, um, all the tops of their turrets were painted a different color. And that's so uh, the planes that launched off of the battleships, when they were coming back, they looked at the color of the top of the turrets, and that's how... They were able, ooh, took out a ship. That's how the uh, the planes, when they were coming back to their ship, they noticed the color of the tops of the turrets, and that's how they could recognize which ship was theirs. <clears> hmm. <throat> 
All right, guys, so we're, we're almost 10 minutes past uh, our stopping time, so <clears throat> we go ahead and get ready to wrap it up here. Um, as always, our content schedule is as follows. Um, all content is Monday through Friday. Um, daily quiz question comes out at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, random poll of the day, 10 a.m. Central Time. Random short of the day, 11 a.m. Central Time. Our live stream is for one hour every Friday evening, 7 p.m. Central Time, and one weekly video every Friday morning at 7 a.m. Central Time. And that is our schedule. So um, with that having said, um, had a great stream tonight. I really uh, had fun with this one. I hope you guys had a good time chilling and chatting about, you know, all these different things. Um, Nathan, Matt, Wolf, and uh, our, our two uh, newcomers. I hope all of you guys uh, enjoyed the stream. It was a blast as always having you guys with me. Thank you guys for supporting the stream as always. And um, that's it for this stream uh, for this week. So you guys know the drill. Until the next time, drive safely.